Hey everyone, after a strong rally, mid cap and small cap stocks have corrected significantly and created good buying opportunity. So in this video, I've tried to compile a list of fundamentally strong mid cap and small cap stocks that are worth considering in this crash. But before that, please take a step back and analyze your risk profile and percentage allocation across large mid and small cap stocks and make sure that there's a good balance across three of them. Now, generally, when there's a correction in the market, the first reaction is to identify stocks that are fundamentally strong and have corrected significantly. Because the assumption is that more the correction, better would be the valuation and hence more return potential. While this is a great way to identify opportunities, I also like another way where I like to identify stocks that are least impacted in the sell off and showing strong recovery. It shows that there's a huge strength in the counter and investors do not want to sell them. These are the stocks that grows more when the market recovers. So I have a list of nearly 300 plus stocks that I track on a daily basis. And after the recent correction, I've tried to identify stocks that are showing huge strength and have fallen less and stocks where there's a good correction. So the first part of this video, we'll look at stocks that are showing great strength. And second part, we'll cover stocks that have fallen significantly and looking attractive. But before we begin, just a disclaimer that this video is only for educational purpose. The idea is to share my knowledge. Please make sure that you do your own research before investing your hard-earned money because at the end of the day, only you are responsible for your profits and loss. All right, let's get started. So first talk is Indocount. It is world's largest company in bed linen. Company generates around 70% business from US. By the way, I've recently done a detailed video on Indocount with seven growth drivers. If you haven't watched the video, please have a look. Now, if you look at its share price in the last three years, it corrected from levels of 300 to 100 rupee and now again crossed levels of 300. The reason for correction was due to sharp jump in cotton prices and destocking of inventory in US. However, now cotton prices have corrected significantly and stabilized and US retailers are restocking the inventory. So company is poised to grow. In fact, recently Indocount has declared its February export data and exports are up by 70% year on year. Even after the correction, Indocount is trading just below 10% from its peak and showing huge strength. Currently, Indocount commands a market cap of around 6,500 crore and trading at a P ratio of 19. So this would be my first pick. Second pick is Scams. Company has around 65 to 70% market share in RTA sector. And I always say that mutual fund industry in India is still in nascent stages. So Scams is a great SIP grade stock. Its share price is corrected nearly 50% after a sharp rally during COVID. But it has again jumped around 50%. Even during this correction phase, Scams has only corrected 7% and looking solid. Currently, it commands a market cap of around 15,000 crore and a P ratio of 46. Third stock is CDSL. Again, leader in DMED sector of India with nearly 70% market share. And Indian stock market is again bound to grow because of great return potential and rising awareness towards equity investment. CDSL share price also corrected after a sharp jump, but it has already doubled in last one year. Even during this fall, CDSL has corrected 16% so far. Currently, it commands a market cap of around 18,000 crore and a P ratio of 51. Now, I've recently done a detailed video on both camps and CDSL. Then fourth stock is Sansera Engineering, an auto engineering company that manufactures components for two-wheeler, passenger vehicle, commercial vehicle, off-road, agriculture sector with top clients in each area. Interestingly, Sansera is also diversified into EV segment as well as in aerospace segment. That would drive the growth in the future. Again, I've done a detailed video on the company. In last one year, its share price has jumped from 700 rupee to 1000 rupee and recently there is just 11% fall. Currently, it commands a market cap of around 5200 crore and trading at a P ratio of 30. Then fifth stock is Inox India. Recently listed company that manufactures cryogenic equipment used to store and transfer gases like hydrogen, oxygen and so on. Its IPO price was around 660. Then it touched, uh, it opened on uh, 850 rupee and uh, touched levels of around 1250. And currently it is trading at levels of around 1150. So stock is down only around 12% and showing good strength. Currently it commands a market cap of around 10,000 crore and trading at a P ratio of 57. On screen that the P is wrong. Again, I've done detailed analysis on the company. Now sixth stock is a new one that I've been tracking for some time. It's Nuama Wealth. It's basically into wealth management sector and the biggest growth driver for the company is rising affluent Indian population. So there are many people who like to take PMS service or alternate investment fund. That's where Nuwama comes into picture. Company has recently done its IPO and stock is on a consistent rise. Even during this correction, it has fallen only 8%. Currently, 
currently it commands a market cap of around 15,000 crore and a PE ratio of 28. That looks very reasonable as compared to its peers like Anand Rati that command a PE of 72 and for that matter even HDFC AMC that commands a PE of 45. Duama is already in my list of stocks to discuss in detail. Then seventh stock is CMS Infosystem. It is the largest cash management company in India where it helps in currency circulation in the economy from bank to ATM to customer. Now you might think that India's future is digital and I also used to think the same. But data suggests that cash withdrawal from ATM is not reducing. In fact, it is increasing. Moreover, the biggest growth driver for CMS is that banks are outsourcing this work of cash management via ATM. And that's where CMS Infosystem is in a sweet spot. Moreover, the company is also into technology solution side where it does managed services like ATM as a service, software reconciliation and banking automation. Recently, its Ernst Weil promoter that was a PE firm has exited and top names have invested in the company. In fact, the key person Rajiv Kaul who runs this company has also added stake in it recently. So earlier the company was consolidating but now share is rising. Even during this correction, its share price has not corrected. Currently, it commands a market cap of 6200 crore and a PE ratio of just 18. I'll soon do a detailed video on CMS Infosystem. Next stock in the list is Sami Hotel. This is again a recently listed IPO and the third largest hotel chain in India in terms of number of rooms. Company has a unique business of buying underperforming hotels and revamping them. I've recently discussed this company in detail and explained why hotel sector is looking very promising at the moment. In this recent correction, Sami share price has fallen only 10%. Currently, it commands a market cap of around 4,600 crore with EV to EBITDA of 24. We can't look at PE at the moment as it is in loss at net profit level, but in the next one or two quarter, company would be profitable at uh, on a sustainable basis. Even ace investor Mr. Madhusudan Kela has invested in the company recently. The next stock is Narayan Rudyalaya, one of the most reasonably valued hospital company available today in the market. And hospital sector in India is bound to grow. In this correction, company is corrected around 14% and uh, now showing good strength. Currently, it commands a market cap of 25,500 crore and trading at a P ratio of 32. Then 10 stock is microcap company, it's Max India. Just around 9,000 crore market cap that operates in senior care sector of India and part of Max Group. Now, senior care business in India is still in the nascent stages and bound to grow in the next 10-20 years. In the near term, Max India is planning to launch around 1.5 million square feet of residential area for senior care every year. Even during this correction, Max India has shown big strength. I've already done two videos on Max India recently. Next talk in the list is Watek Wabek. I've been tracking this company for some time now. It is basically into business of management of drinking water, wastewater treatment, industrial water treatment, and desalination plants. Its share price has doubled in last one year, but still it has fallen only 13% in this correction so far. Currently, it commands a market cap of 4,300 crore and trading at a P ratio of 14.4. So valuation is looking very reasonable. Then 12th stock is Sona BLW, one of the top company in EV auto auxiliary space. Although it always command a premium valuation, even today it is trading at a PE of 75. But stock is showing huge strength and down only 10% from its peak. Now yesterday Indian government has announced that it will cut the import duty on 8,000 fully built EV cars per year from 100% to 15%. In return for a minimum investment commitment of 4,150 crore and a commitment to make in India. And that will be a huge relief for companies like Tesla who want to manufacture in India. And Sona BLW can be a big beneficiary of this. So these are the stocks that are showing a lot of strength. If I summarize it, include Indocount, CAM, CDSL, Sansara Engineering, Inox India, Nuwama Wealth, CMS Infosystem, Sami Hotel, Narayan Rudyalaya, Max India, Watek Wabek and Sona BLW. Apart from this, there are more stocks showing strength, but I feel the valuation comfort is less. For example, Dixon has already rallied three times in last one year and yet there is huge strength. My only concern is that it is trading at a P ratio of 120. Same story with Keynes, huge outperformance and very less correction, but trading at a P ratio of 120. In such cases, these companies have to consistently outperform, otherwise one bad quarter and stock can tank badly. We have seen it with Dixon in the past, so avoiding such stocks for now. By the way, I also own some of these stocks in my portfolio and adding them in this correction. This detail I share on my weekly video series where I post one exclusive video every week and I've recently shared my own portfolio detail. You can also join this exclusive community of serious long-term investor on my website or via the join button. But this is only for long-term serious investors and the idea is not to give tips but to share my knowledge and conviction. 
Now let us look at the stocks that have corrected significantly and looking attractive to consider adding in the portfolio. So first stock is Gokul Das Export, a textile exporter with majority of business from US. I covered it last year at levels of around 400 and stock touched levels of 1000 rupees. However, there is around 28% correction. Currently, company commands a market cap of 4500 crore and trading at a P ratio of 33. The biggest growth driver for Gokul Das is similar to Indocount where US retailers are restocking the inventory. I think that it's matter of time, one or two quarter and Gokul Das should be back on track worth considering at the moment. Second stock is Craftsman Automation. It's basically a precision equipment manufacturer that find usage in automotive powertrain, automotive aluminium and industrial sector. It is also a leading manufacturer of storage solution for warehouses which is a fast growing segment. Again I discussed it levels of around 3000 and it touched levels of 5500 however stock is corrected 27% from its peak. Currently it commands a market cap of around 8500 crore and trading at an attractive P ratio of 26. Then third stock is Equita Small Finance. I already mentioned that I like the small finance sector in India and my preferred pick in this space is Equitas where I have already done a detailed video. In last one year its share price has grown from 60 rupee to 110 rupee. But there is a good 19% correction. Currently it commands a market cap of 10,700 crore and trading at an attractive PE ratio of 13.7 and price to book of 2. A great value buy. Then next stock in the list is Army Organics. Again I have done a detailed video. It's basically a specialty chemical company with focus on pharma intermediate and its new electrolyte additive used in lithium ion battery where Ami Organics is the first country outside China to produce this electrolyte additive. But since entire chemical space is struggling due to Chinese competition, Ami Organics share price is also consolidating in the range of 1000 rupees. It did jump but again fell down 23% in this correction. Currently it commands a market cap of around 4000 crore and a P ratio of 55. There might be some pain in the near term but this can be a great opportunity to consider in the portfolio. The next stock in the list is Mrs. Bechta. It's a manufacturer of biscuit products under brand name Krimika and bakery product under brand name English Oven. It also supplies buns and bakery product to top QSR chains of India like McD. After a sharp growth in FR24, its share price is corrected 25%. It did recover slightly but again corrected recently. Currently it commands a market cap of 6000 crore and trading at a PE of 45. I expect Mrs. Bechtel to grow at steady rate and benefit from consumption theme in India. The next stock is Angel One. It started as a brokerage firm but now expanding to become a complete financial firm including insurance, wealth management etc. Its share price also jumped significantly in FR24 but there is a good 32% correction in share price. Angel One should continue to benefit from growing investment market in India. Currently it commands a market cap of 22,000 crore and trading at an attractive P ratio of 21. Next stock is Sula Wine. It's the largest producer of wine in India with more than 50% market share. Again a strong beneficiary of growing trend of wine consumption in India. Its share price consolidated in the range of 450 to 500 rupee and broke out recently to touch levels of 670. But it has corrected 25% from the peak. Currently it commands a market cap of around 4400 crore and trading at a P ratio of 45. I have done detailed video on Sula. Next stock is Tanla Platform. It's the largest player in Indian sea pass industry. Company has recently launched its anti-fishing platform that can potentially be a game changer. I've discussed Tanla a few times. You can watch my last video to understand the detail. Its share price is down 35% from the peak and currently it commands a market cap of 11,500 crore and a P ratio of 21. The next stock is Precall, a leader in driver information system which is basically the ADAS we have in our cars and also in two-wheeler. Company has guided for two times growth in revenue by FI26. Its share price is corrected around 20%. And also recently company informed about GST related clarification asked by government that could also be a reason for correction. But I think that for long term it's a good opportunity. Currently it commands a market cap of 4300 crore and trading at a P ratio of 33. I've done detailed video on pre-call. The next stock is Yathath Hospital. Recently listed hospital company looking very promising. Its stock price is down 20% and it commands a market cap of around 3500 crore with a P ratio of 37. Next stock in the list is Gravita India. A leading recycling company with focus on recycling of lead, aluminium, plastic and rubber. Again discussed it in detail. Future is all about sustainability and Gravita should benefit from it. After a sharp jump its share price is down 30%. Currently it commands a market cap of around 5500 crore and a P ratio of 24. The next stock is Traxxon Technologies. It's a SaaS based tech company where it provides information about private companies that is used by private equity firm, VC firm and so on for private market investment. It's a micro cap company with a market cap of about 900 crore 
and its share price is corrected 30% from the peak. I've discussed Traxon recently a couple of times and clearly mentioned that there is slowdown in the private market sector that has impacted its earning growth. But I expect the earnings to start growing in FY25. Now next two companies are from affordable housing brands. You have Home First and Avas Financiers. I've done detailed video on potential in affordable housing brand sector. India has one of the lowest mortgage to GDP ratio of 11% and demand for affordable housing loan is growing at a fast rate. Home First share price is down 22% from its peak and Avas is down 55%. Home First command a market cap of 7,200 crore and a price to book of 3.4. Avas command a market cap of 10,800 crore with price to book of 3. Next two stock are from logistic sector. I've already done a detailed video on potential in Indian logistic sector and key players in the space. First is Gateway District Park and second is Lomen Logistics. Please note that Gateway is also the parent company of Snowman, which is the leading player in temperature control logistic. Gateway market cap is about 5000 crore, P ratio is 19 and Snowman market cap is around 1000 crore, P ratio of 67. Snowman promoter which is Gateway is consistently adding stake in the company. Currently Gateway District Park is down 17% and Snowman is down 25%. In this space, I have also discussed TVA supply chain which is struggling at the moment and has corrected 40% from its peak but I'm fairly confident of TV supply chain to do well in the long term, tracking it closely. Okay, next three stocks are from microfinance sector. Considering the asset quality at all time high, microfinance sector is growing at a fast rate. Although it's a bit risky segment where NPAs can shoot up significantly during difficult time. But for now, this segment is looking promising. Although there's a good correction in the entire sector after RBI slammed them for charging higher interest rate. So you've got Credit Access Grameen, Arman Financials and Satin Credit Care in the space. Credit access market cap is 22,500 crore, P ratio of 16.8, price to book of 3.9. Uh, then Arman market cap is 1800 crore, price to earning 811, price to book of 4. And Satin market cap 2200 crore, price to earning of 5.4 and price to book of just 1.1. Next stock is Praj Industry. It's a leading manufacturer of equipment for bioenergy, high purity system, critical process equipment, wastewater treatment and so on. Company would be a key beneficiary of government plan to mix ethanol with petrol and diesel. I've discussed the business in detail. Its share price is down 30% and currently to command a market cap of 8,500 crore with a P ratio of 30. Next stock in the list is Rate Gain Travels. It is one of world's largest SaaS based technology company in travel and hospitality segment. Now if you look at its share price after a sharp correction in 2022, there's jumped around three times. However, there's a good 19% correction. Currently, it commands a market cap of around 8,600 crore and trading at a P ratio of 67. Now, valuation might look rich today, but there's a reason for it. Company has guided for achieving revenue of 2,000 crore in next three years with EBITDA of 25%. That would translate to an operating profit of 500 crore. And currently, company has done trailing 12-month operating profit of just 168 crore. So that's 3x growth expected in EBITDA in next three years. Even institutional investors have shown strong interest where company has done its IPO in last quarter. So even though the PE is looking expensive today, there is a lot of growth potential. Next talk is RBL Bank. Since the entire banking sector is looking promising, RBL Bank can be a good option in mid to small cap category. Its stock price is down 25% from the peak and now commands a market cap of 13,500 crore, PE of 12.5, price to book of just one. So valuation wise, it is looking very attractive. Apart from this, a few promising businesses that have corrected significantly include Landmark Car, which is into premium car dealership business with market cap of 3,000 crore, price to earning of 40. Then Global Spirit is another promising name with business of bulk alcohol manufacturing as well as IM IL segment and companies eyeing on the growth of its lucrative IMFL segment. Its share price is corrected 45% from the peak due to volatility in raw material that impacted its margin badly. But management has guided for margin improvement from Q1 of FI25. Currently, Globus command a market cap of 2000 crore, price to earning of just 16. Then you have Shankara Build Pro that can be a proxy for growing demand for building material products. Company currently commands a market cap of 1500 crore, price to earning of 20. Next is IQ, that is into manufacturing of LED lighting solution. Share price is corrected 40% from the peak, currently commands a market cap of 2200 crore and P ratio of 34.5. Next is Avalon Technology, that is into electronics manufacturing with 50% business coming from US. Since there is slowdown in US, it has impacted Avalon's earning growth. Hence, its share price is down 33% from the peak, but worth keeping a close eye. Then Avalon India is taking test of patience, but I am positive on its long-term growth story. 
Prints pipe is another company that is underperforming and for a long time and valuations are very attractive. MTR has corrected 40% due to poor result, but management has guided for 45 to 50% growth in FR25. Then Happiest Mind is a fundamentally strong company but jumped 10 times within one year of IPO listing making it super expensive. Although stock is down 45% from its peak but still valuations are slightly high. Again long term stories in time. Finally I would like to share my viewpoint on JTL industry. I found it very promising and I still expect company to continue the outperformance due to huge demand in structural steel tube. However, the recent news on a shady operator buying stake in JTL has created negative sentiment and share price is down around 33%. Currently, it commands a market cap of around uh, 3100 crore and uh, trading at an attractive P ratio of 26. So worth keeping a close eye. So this is my list of top small cap and mid cap ideas. Now please note that I expect the market to remain volatile for the next 2-3 months due to general election in India and a lot would depend upon interest rate in the US. Nearly 70% people are predicting the first rate cut in US by June month. Any negative surprises can result in profit booking and positive news can result in rally. So you don't need to be in a hurry. Just invest systematically over the next 2-3 months. Maybe you can break your investment in let's say 3-4 parts and first part can be invested in March month and then keep adding systematically over the next couple of months. Now tell me which stocks are you adding in the correction. If you find this video useful, do share it with your friends. I'll see you next video. Till then, take care.